Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Duns and Dragons, and I want to present some receipts that Duns and Dragons content increasingly is not connected in any way to making money. And very unusual topic. I, I know right now many people are like, oh, Scott, that's completely wrong. But, and I understand what you're saying, right? So that, so one of the reasons why I wanna do this video is I, I do, you know, when I find evidence of something that I've been saying for a long time, I wanna present it to you. And I think there's brand new evidence of something that I've been saying for a while. All right, so what I'm saying is that Dungeons and Dragons, the intellectual property is not about money. We are like, oh, Scott, that's the most ridiculous thing. We're all capitalists now. Everything's about the U.S. dollar. The, that greedy Hasbro, they're just going to get money from Dungeons and Dragons. All they care about, that greedy corporation, getting your money. And I'm like, nah, you're a fool. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. We're past this. And increasingly, there's massive evidence that global corporations are making content that is completely severed completely severed from making money. Uh, one, I'm just gonna say it really briefly because there's, you will literally find, actually, you'll find a lot of people complaining about, about Disney, but one of the things Disney's in trouble for right now is they've been making content that is specifically targeted at 3% of the American public for decades. They're like, hey, we could tell you a story that most families would enjoy, that most people would enjoy, forget that. Here's a, here is a story that is hyper-focused on what 3% of Americans really care about. And we're willing to burn money in a hole to get these stories made, right? And that's exactly what they've been doing, right? And, but, but here's the new receipt. It's Warner Brothers, okay? So I was listening to Grace Randolph and she's, you know, reviewing the movie industry. And, um, and increasingly, this, the small screen is tied to the big screen, right? So right now where you'll see this small screen, big screen uh, mix is, um, is Robert Pattinson's Batman is big screen. Colin Farrell's Penguin from the Batman movie, there's only been one of them, is, um, is now going to be small screen content in a brand new show that's going on Max, which is Warner Brothers owned. And what's going to happen on that show? So it's going to be called The Penguin. And, you know, Penguin as in Batman's villain. And it's going to be Colin Farrell. And what is it going to be? It's going to be like the Scarpetti family. Like the Falcones. And crime in Gotham. Right? And, but here's the, here's the reason we're talking today. The Penguin is virtually guaranteed to not make money. Right now, in my humble opinion, so here's why. So, who's it star? Stars um, Colin Farrell, but he doesn't even look like Colin Farrell. He's completely covered in makeup, and you cannot, and no, no reasonable person could even recognize if they didn't know. No one be like, oh, that's Colin Farrell, right? Like he's completely unrecognizable, right? So you're like, well, so he's a real movie star. He's going to cost real money, right? And then, how is the Penguin going to perform? Almost certainly, the Penguin is going to perform exactly like the show Gotham did. So both of these shows are the same thing. Hey, everybody, here's a great idea. Why don't we do a Batman television show that doesn't have Batman? Won't everybody love that? And the answer is no. Absolutely no one will love it. In fact, zero people asked for it. No one asked for another show about Batman that Batman isn't in. Right, and I was upset when they announced Gotham. I'm like, you're gonna set up the sets, hire all the actors, and give me a Batman show that never has Batman in it. What type of absolute pure garbage is this, right? And just as, and I, I watched 20 minutes of, of Gotham season one, and was like, I'm out, I cannot watch this, this is too upsetting, right? Like, and then I felt, completely correct in skipping the show. Why did I feel completely correct in skipping the show? Well, what did I, what happened with the show? I'll tell you what happened with the show, right? Uh, basically, um, nothing. No, nobody covered it. Nobody did episode by episode breakdowns, not at the macro level. There might've been a couple scrub channels that covered it, 
there was no excitement about the show. Nobody cared about it, right? Because there was no reason to care about it. It's a cop show that's not in a good world for a cop show because Batman is supposed to cover Gotham. It is the most ridiculous garbage show. It got no attention. And there's absolutely no no evidence that the show made any money, right? And in addition to that, there's no, like, there was no buzz on it. There was no one who was excited about it. There were no real, you know, successful toy lines. There were no video game, you know, no successful video games that came out of it. Nothing. It produced, Gotham produced nothing, right? Now the Penguin is the same thing. Hey, everybody, you guys all excited about a brand new Batman show that doesn't have Batman in it? And everybody's like, no, no. So here's the question, right? If Warner Brothers is making another show that clearly, in my humble opinion, I think we have the receipts at this point, right? That no one is excited about, that, that is absolute garbage, and that has, there's no real functioning reason to make, why is Warner Brothers making it? That gets very interesting, right? And this is what I'm talking about with Dungeons and Dragons. I believe that the lore, the history, the economics on Dungeons and Dragons are so complicated that not every, not a single person in the world understands it. I understand Dungeons and Dragons lore, and I understand Dungeons and Dragons canon. I am desperately trying to understand the economics of Dungeons and Dragons. And as I look at Dungeons and Dragons, I can tell you right now, Dungeons and Dragons, the purpose of that product is absolutely not to make money. The Dungeons and Dragons product is horribly positioned for money making. And constantly, they are making content in it that is not absolutely not positioned to make money. So if Hasbro is making all this D&D content that is not geared to make money, what is it geared for? And, and I'm sorry, I'm only bringing the question today, right? So I know you want an answer. And I believe I have, I have some theories, right? But I'm still forming them. I'm not ready to present them yet. But I am convinced... First, you acknowledge the issue. Then you start to address the issue. They're increasingly in our world. There are businesses that are being spun up with absolutely no intention of making money. The purpose for the business is something different. And I'm convinced Dungeons and Dragons is one of those. That Dungeons and Dragons existence is, and in my humble opinion, was never about money. It was never about money and it's less about money today than ever there's a hundred things they could do commercially on Dungeons and Dragons that they constantly do not do because they're achieving a different purpose with Dungeons and Dragons a purpose different than making money in my humble opinion and I think that the Penguin is strong Warner Brothers the Penguin is receipts to say yes look 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 at the actual shape of the world it is extremely clear that there is content ma being made that has absolutely no purpose for money making. The purpose is different. And we have to acknowledge that the purpose is different and then we can determine what the purpose is, in my humble opinion. Every single word you just heard was my humble opinion. The important part is when I get to your, your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a fetch millennium.